My name's Randy Newman, and I'm a songwriter, performer, uh, and I uh, write music for pictures. I got started uh, in the business when I was about 16, and I started, uh, my friend uh, Lenny Warnker's father uh, started Liberty Records, and Lenny was interested in uh, the record business to some degree, and, and in songs, uh, and in you know, uh, he was familiar with Carol King and everything, and uh, Alden music. And uh, he kind of—I was studying music at the time, theory, you know, and, and piano. And he, he said, well, "Why don't you try and write some songs?" So I did, and uh, I took him around, you know, and and uh, started getting published, and that's how I started. 17, I was at UCLA, so I was studying in school, but also private lessons, yeah, uh, and piano. And I'd given up piano, I think, private lessons anyway, and uh, just studying theory and counterpoint privately with uh, Castle Nuovo Tedesco and uh, George Tremblay later, and uh, later Bill Kettering conducting. I always knew I wasn't going to be a player. I mean, they're few and far between. Uh, people who can earn their living uh, playing the piano. Uh, the technique required, uh, the talent required, and the, and, the, and the discipline required. I mean, I never had the discipline to practice the amount that uh, uh, would have been necessary to be a, a classical player. Uh, and uh, I always thought I'd be a film composer. That was in my family. Uh, three of my uncles were film composers, so it looked like a possible business. It looked difficult, and it is. But uh, it, that's where I, th I never thought of any other occupation, particularly. You know? And uh, so writing the songs was, I knew that it would be creative work I'd be doing rather than, than uh, concertizing in any way. Uh, so it didn't seem that odd to me. Though I never, to this day, feel a great deal of confidence that just because I've produced something in the past, I'll produce something tomorrow or, you know, when I go in there to write. For some odd reason, uh, which, of which I'm tired of even contemplating, I don't have that uh, kind of b belief when I open that studio door that something great's going to come out of there. And it wouldn't hurt if I had it, you know. I mean, it's like faith, you know, would be nice. In interviews, I would say things like, you know, oh, I don't think I can do this, I don't think I can do that. And they sort of, people don't believe that you actually feel that way. Uh, they think it's like, a, you know, a fourth grader showing you a painting and say, oh, this isn't any good, geez, this is terrible. But, you know, you want the person to say, oh, that's great. Uh, maybe I'm a little better than I was. And maybe I was better... When I was 17, 18, I think I wrote more. It was bad often, but I, I, uh, I believe I wrote more in my 17th year than in my 37th or 47th, uh, except for movies which, where you're forced to work. Uh, I have no idea why, the, uh, uh, why that malady plagues me a little bit, but it does. In a movie, a uh, regular uh, feature, a non-animated kind of thing. The music and sound are the last things they do. Uh, so, theoretically, a movie is finished when you get it. It, it hardly ever is anymore. There's changes made and they're, they're recut and you have to redo things or they cut the music. Uh, but what you get is the picture and you get... Uh, but before, before the technology allowed it, you used to get timesheet telling you that, you know, at 1.3 seconds, uh, Robert Redford steps out of the dugout. At, at, at 3.9 seconds, he takes his first step to the plate. And that's how you do it. You didn't have a picture. And, and uh, my uncle Alfred uh, did, you know, 200 pictures that way. And uh, like I say, those guys did better than we're doing now. Now you get it, you can lock in, uh, 
if you choose. Johnny Williams still does it that way. It doesn't get, it doesn't look at picture while he's doing it. But uh, everyone else almost, uh, you get the picture and you can lock it into where you're starting and where you're stopping. And, and maybe you play, um, improvise some guys or you, or you think about what you need to do. And, and uh, uh, I don't really play it into a computer and then that's it. Uh, uh, I put it down on paper so I can see what, because you find things when you put, put it down on paper that, that you wouldn't find just playing like that. I'm not like a great improviser particularly. But I've gotten, th I get things that way, you know. Uh, uh, Johnny Williams would think it was cheating, I think. But, uh, you know, you play a char characteristic trumpet tune along with something that calls for trumpets and, sometimes, and it works, you know, so there you go. In the, in the case of, of everyone who is going to get into this field, they're going to have to demo it. Uh, there's the few of us left who don't really always have to demo, but it's going the way of the, the dodo. Uh, you're going to have to uh, do a pretty good representative demo on synthesizer. Some directors can hear it on piano, and they'd be all, with me. They'd be all right, but even, I have to do like a. I can only do like a half-assed one. I said, you know, my I don't have like good uh, samples and stuff necessarily. But I mean, I'll do it, and they say, oh, this is what it sounds like. And sometimes they'll come over to hear it. Sometimes they won't. If they, you work for, I've worked for John Laster a lot of times, so I mean, uh, he trusts me to know what to do, you know. But, uh, but you know, he'll, he'll want changes too, which is, which is fine. I mean, his instincts got, got better and better and better, and, and he, he's right more often than I am now about, about uh, even musical things. It's on paper already with me. Uh, uh, and the demo represents some, <clears throat> as best I can, what's on the paper. Not everything, but, you know, something. But, but in, for the purposes of, 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 of people coming now into it, they're going to have to have everything on the demo, and they're going to have to have it, and they will have it. You know, so the samples are very good now, and everything's good now, and they'll play it for the director. And then uh, there are guys that are so good at that, that sometimes the directors like the demo they make uh, better than what they like the orchestra doing, and they'll use it. What I do, and what uh, all composers do, almost without exception, uh, is write a sketch. I put everything I want in there, but you don't have to. You can put two lines, three lines, four lines, and you have an orchestrator who puts it on big orchestra paper with every line, you know, flute, oboe, clarinet. I'll put, you know, like three flutes, you know, uh, clarinet, and put it on seven lines. Uh, and then orchestrator gets it and m may make little changes, uh, uh, maybe not uh, always to my benefit, you know, uh, uh, nowadays. And, uh, uh, and then... It's given to copyists who copy the music, the parts. Uh, you, you have the recording days, three or four days. You can maybe do, you know, 10 minutes of music a day, maybe 12. So if you got 60 minutes of music, maybe you record five days. Uh, that's a six-hour session. It's dictated, the type, in some ways, the type of songs I've written. Since I don't, you know, have a voice like uh, uh, Andrea Bocelli, you know, or or uh, uh, I never saw myself necessarily as a romantic figure, to where and the and the vast repertory of of uh, songs is, is love songs. Ninety five percent of them throughout history have been that. That's what people like. But at some point, I grew bored with 
even before I started recording with writing that type of song, I remember it very well. It's the one I, I was writing a song for Frank Sinatra Jr. And it was called Susie or something. And I couldn't take it. I mean, because I had read books and, and I could, I didn't know why we sh shouldn't have the same latitude a short story writer has. We still don't have it. I mean, no one does it much. But so I wrote, I wrote uh, Simon Smith, and uh, I remember that was the first really odd kind of song like that I wrote. Uh, and then I continued most of my repertory. There are not love songs, which is which is highly atypical for uh, any songwriter outside of you know people who write for Sesame Street. In some way. I've written sort of third-person songs for my whole, almost my whole writing career. It's, it's, I'm in character with many of them. I don't think it's the best medium for that kind of work, necessarily, because people are used to, from me to you, you know, uh, 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 to, to, to that, that type of direct expression. Maybe the, the medium is better for that, possibly. You know, for you know, like when you're going 80 miles an hour on the freeway, you don't, you know, not necessarily going to notice irony. You know, I mean, oh, that's ironic. Uh, I don't know whether I'd notice myself, but it's what I choose to do. And my best songs, I can see characters in it, and by the diction of the singer, uh, what what he says, the words he knows, and how he says it. The audience can tell what he's like, what it's about, you know. Uh, I generally think the audience is not, they recognize themselves in these people. I don't see that. I think the audience is a little better than the people I write about usually. Mm -hmm. I would keep an open mind. As don't close off to, to saying, I don't like this kind of music. I hate that. I hate that. Uh, there's no sense being a uh, doctrinaire about music. People tend to be jazz people don't like rock and roll. There's rock and roll people like this. There's rock and roll, and then there's thing that isn't. Like for instance, Steve Miller is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Some odd snobby Eastern thing. This is a guy who's had like 13 hits. They don't like the nature of his hits or something. What's the matter with him? You know, has he got the plague? Uh, uh, there's odd kind of things like that where people do in music. The biggest snobs in the world can be a, 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 a classical music people where they just they won't accept anything else. Don't let that happen. Uh, if you're going to write for orchestra, listen to people who could write for it, you know, like uh, 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 Richard Strauss or, or uh, 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 Ravel. Uh, you know, you can't get her with Beethoven, Brahms, and I listen to a lot of it. Know what an orchestra can sound like. And uh, listen to what movie music is. You know, see what the people are expecting of you. See what the way the state, state of things, or what Pirates of the Caribbean sounds like. I may not like it, but they sure, they like it, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, for songwriters... Find the ones you like and and uh, uh, and listen to it, you know, and uh, be hard on yourself a little bit, uh, but don't let the critic overwhelm the creative person in you to where you're just cutting everything off because uh, that's no good. That's no good. That's no good. That doesn't happen that frequently. I mean, a lot when people play me stuff. As a matter of fact, the worse they are, the more they write, you know. It's just one crappy thing after another. You got to be a little hard on yourself, but don't choke choke it.